Many of you want to become millionaires and some of you might already have crossed this milestone. This is for both categories. People say the first million dollars is the hardest to make, but today a million dollars isn't what it used to be. The catch is, you need to have a million dollars to understand that it's not enough. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. So what is there to do? Watch until the end because we're breaking it down for you. Hello Aluxers and welcome back to this special Sunday motivational video. Somehow you got your hands on a million dollars, after taxes. Maybe you sold your first company, maybe you got lucky and Aunt Jemima left you an inheritance. Buckle up because we'll take you through it all. Let's break down your best options. Here are 15 ways to invest one million dollars. Number one, buy rental properties. This is the first item on our list because this is what we did. The moment real money started coming in, all of it went toward buying rental properties. What we're about to say will definitely step on some toes, but $1 million isn't enough to make you rich. But if you know what you're doing with it, $1 million could mean you'll never be poor again. At least that's how we did it. $1 million invested in rental properties will bring in between $50,000 and $100,000 per year in rental income. And this is straight up paying cash for your properties. If you know what you're doing and are open to using debt, things can look much brighter. You've got plenty of options to choose from. Single family, multifamily, commercial spaces. Anyone with $1 million can pick up a couple of apartments near the city center or around business centers and live off the rent. As we said earlier, fifty dollars to $100,000 per year before tax might not qualify as rich living by any means. But if you're frugal, it means you and your family will no longer worry about food or bills again. The average property appreciates by 3 to 6% in price every year. So not only are you bringing in rental income, but the price of the property is also going up. This is important, so pay attention. The first million dollars? Park it in things that make you money while you sleep, and then pretend you never had it. A couple of nights ago, we were hosting some friends and one of them raised the following question. What would you do with $5 million right now? Our answer? Put it next to the other ones and get back to work. People wrongly assume if you get $1 million, you'll stop working and sip Cuba Libres in Cuba on a beach only to get there and realize that life has more in store for them. But maybe you're not a sophisticated real estate investor and don't know where to invest. That's where this next option comes into play. Number 2. Invest in an REIT REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. To put it simply, people with money such as yourself join up and put the money together in a management fund. The people who manage the fund go out into the marketplace and invest the money into properties that generate income. The money coming in is then divided by how much every person has contributed to the fund. REITs are great for people who don't want to handle the day-to-day -day aspects of managing their rental properties, and these funds also have the added benefit of getting yourself involved into bigger deals. For example, buying and renting an office building is definitely more expensive than picking up one or two apartments, the type of deal that would be difficult to close on your own. Just Google REIT and your country and you'll find investment options in your geography. It's important to know that if you're willing to put in the time, you can get better returns on your own, but at this stage, it's all about saving you time. Number 3. Bonds or CDs – Never in a Savings Account Truth be told, we didn't want to include this one. We were about to make a 10 list video, but since you've been so vocal about including everything, we put this in early so we can get it out of the way. Out of the three, bonds are our favorite option. They're super easy to understand. You simply lend money to a corporation or the government and in exchange for your money, you get paid a fixed amount regularly. When the deadline on the bond expires, you're paid back your initial amount. If you need the money, you can sell the bond to other people or back to the bank before the term. You can find bonds in every country. They vary between 2.5 and 6% and you can buy government bonds directly through your national bank. Just walk in and ask about them. CDs, referring to Certificate of Deposits, is another financial instrument where you basically agree with the bank that you'll leave your money untouched for a fixed amount of time, and in exchange, they'll provide you with a better interest rate. Personally, we don't use these. The highest return we've seen was under 2% and they don't have the same flexibility as bonds, but at least they kinda keep up with inflation. 
but it's still better than just keeping your money in a savings account. We don't know about you, but the worst thing for us is just having money sitting around losing its value. Every single day, the US dollar is worth less and less. The government keeps printing money and shoving it into the economy in order to compensate for the impact of the coronavirus. And what does the marketplace do? It reacts by absorbing the money and raising prices accordingly. This is why real estate prices keep going up. This is why Jeff Bezos is worth close to $200 billion. That's why Tesla's stock price is going up the way it is right now. It's just the market absorbing all the new cash. We do not recommend keeping your money in a savings account for more than the short term. Do you know how much the bank pays you to have your money in a savings account per year? 0.01%. Do you know what the average inflation rate is? 2.44%. If you keep $1 million in a savings account for one year, at the end, you'll have $1 million and $100. The Bank of America will effectively pay you $100 to keep $1 million in your savings account. Don't believe us? Do the math yourself. But the buying power drops because of inflation and effectively your money is now worth $975,600. Inflation just cost you almost $25,000 in a single year. No matter how you put it, you're losing way more than you're earning. And that, my friends, is why you never keep your money in a savings account or under your mattress for that matter. Number four, gold, silver, and other metals. If the previous point freaked you out by the impact inflation has on your wealth, don't worry, there are ways to protect yourself against inflation. The preferred option of multimillionaires to make sure their money keeps its value is to convert it to gold and silver. You can buy a gold or silver index on any trading company, but you can also go about it the old school way. Go out and buy physical gold. Gold has been the go-to resource for store of value since the Middle Ages. What we like about metals is every time governments screw with the economy, smart investors always move their money out of the marketplace and into gold, resulting in predictable jumps of the price of gold. For example, this is the price of gold for the past 20 years. 2010 was the jump after the economy crashed in 2009. 2020, we have COVID on our hands and are feeling that the entire stock market is in a bubble, so people move their investments into gold, at least for the medium term. At this point, you might be thinking, why the hell would anyone invest in something other than gold? Just look at these numbers. And the answer is fairly simple. For sophisticated investors, the price of gold is a barometer of just how quickly fiat currencies, like the US dollar or euro, are losing their buying power. When you invest in gold, although the price goes up, the value remains the same. Your gold doesn't make you any more gold while you keep it in your safe. It's just worth more in today's money. If you want to grow your fortune, you need to technically beat the return that gold provides. Number five, index funds. You want the hands down best option where to park your money and how to have it grow for you? Index funds is the answer, but don't take our word for it. Someone asked Warren Buffett the following question. What would you tell someone to do with a million dollars that is 30 years old, unmarried and with no dependencies? Please be as specific as possible. Random man. And Buffett said, I would invest in a Vanguard index fund and get back to work. That random man was Tim Ferriss, the author of 4-Hour Workweek and Tools of Titans. For those of you who have no idea what we're talking about, allow us to introduce you to the S&P 500. This is a fund that bundles together the top performing 500 companies in the US. If a company does poorly, it's automatically taken out and replaced with one coming up. You're basically investing in the best companies all at once. Because of this level of diversification, you're almost guaranteed that you'll make money over the long run. Ready to have your mind blown away? The average annualized total return for the S&P 500 index over the past 90 years is 9.8%, almost 10% year after year for 90 years. $1 million invested today at 9.8% over 10 years means $2.6 million. Keep it there for 20 years and you'll end up with $6.5 million. If you're young and have time on your side, leave it for 30 years and you'll end up with $16.5 million. This is why even Albert Einstein considered compound interest as the eighth wonder of the world. And this is how you make sure you never go broke. 
set it and forget it and your entire family tree could live off the interest when you retire. We're not sponsored by them, but hands down the best way to invest in an index fund right now is Vanguard. Check out if they're available in your geography and start learning more about them. And if this is exciting for you and something you want to take full advantage of in your lifetime, we recommend you pick up the following book, Money, Master the Game. We'll link to it in the description. It's a simple read that walks you through the entire industry. Even better, if you go to alex.com slash free book and it's your first time signing up, you can get the audiobook version for free thanks to our friends at Audible. Number six, stock market. All this investment talk probably has your blood flowing and the more you think about it, the more you come to realize maybe you can do better than 10% a year. You've seen Tesla stock price increase five times since March 2020 and want a piece of the action. We promise to always keep it 100 with you. Statistically, nobody beats the market in the long run. But every now and then, great opportunities present themselves, and for those who are willing to take advantage of them, you could really win big. A while back, we did a video of the stocks we've invested in during the pandemic, which you can check out by clicking in the top right corner. And we've been able to cash in substantial returns because of it, and we're nowhere near the point of sale. Although most of our stock funds are just growing in an index fund, now and then we love the rush you get when you play the market and get it right. The best way to learn is to simply invest a small amount of real money, don't fool yourself trading with demo money, and then play it as safe as you can. You'll learn more and more by having money on the table than if you just played investor. The internet is filled with stock investment platforms, so you should have no problem finding one. We're not paid or sponsored by any of these, but some great beginner options are Robinhood, Revolut, eToro, and so on. If you really want to do this, you'll find a platform that works for you. Number 7. Start a Business With the more passive options out of the way, it's time to get busy. If you had a million dollars and wanted to invest in a business, why not invest in your own business? That way you're taking in all of the risk, but you'll also enjoy all of the returns. Starting a business is a lot more complicated than having a job. It's more like you have multiple jobs and you're not getting paid unless the business survives and thrives for a couple of years. Sure, the million dollars you have under your belt will prove to be quite an advantage and allow you to hire better people and buy the tools you need to accelerate your growth, but don't fall into the trap of overspending. Anyone can make money if they have money. The goal is to make some without spending any. As long as you have a frugal mentality when it comes to your own business, you'll be able to grow it steadily and organically. We've made a video called 15 Things You Need to Know Before Starting Your First Business that we strongly recommend you check out. You should see a card in the top right corner. But what if you don't want to take on the burden of starting a new business from scratch? Well, then the next option might be for you. Number 8. Angel Invest Angel investing is when a new startup needs money and help to take the project off the ground, and you're the one who provides that capital and expertise in exchange for a percentage of the business. With the age of tech startups popping up left, right, and center, everyone wants to think of themselves as an angel investor. But truth be told, it's probably the highest risk option on this entire list. No matter how good you are, if the company you're investing in isn't the one to take the project where it needs to go, it will fail, and so will your investment. A seed investment varies between $10,000 to $100,000. This money is used to get the company to create what is called a minimum viable product and pick up a bit of traction. Based on how well you do at this stage, you can then go ahead and raise more funds at a higher valuation. Seed investments aren't as complicated as they seem, but you never want to be what we call in the industry, dumb money. Dumb money refers to someone who doesn't bring anything else to the table apart from money. Only invest in businesses you understand and have the expertise and connections to accelerate their growth. The entire process used to be rather complicated, but today you have options like AngelList, Angel.co, where you can invest in startups from anywhere in the world as an angel investor. And no, they're not a sponsor either. We kind of hate how we have to say that every single time. Number 9. Venture Capital Fund Investing in companies is also evolving, and that's where the funds come in. Instead of handpicking one or two startups to invest in, you can take the index fund approach here and pool your money with other investors so you diversify your investment and minimize your risk. That's how venture capital funds came to be. Your $1 million investment could back 10 to 20 different companies. Statistically, 10 of them will fail completely, 5 will barely hold on for dear life, Four will grow steadily, and maybe one will blow up. 
Your bet here is the money you'll make off of this one will be enough to make a profit. These collective funds have grown in popularity throughout the world and they usually have a minimum entry level to allow you to invest. Some might even have you commit a recurring amount of money every quarter, so make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. For beginner investors, we definitely wouldn't recommend venture capital as your main option. If you made or have $1 million, there are much safer ways to go about it without risking it all. And speaking of risk, number 10, crypto. You know how at number four we talked about gold as a store of value? For years it was the best option we had, until more recently when Bitcoin came around, which is why people call Bitcoin Gold 2.0, the gold of the internet generation. We are strong believers in blockchain and what this technology will do around the world in the future. And the idea that you could park money that no government can print more of is definitely appealing to every investor out there. The price of Bitcoin at the end of March 2020 when the COVID situation happened dropped to around $5,000. As of making this video, the price is just under $12,000. The entire ecosystem is evolving. The entire process becomes a lot simpler and leaner to access. Many of you are put off because you feel like you don't understand the technology and how to go about it in a safe way, so we've got you covered. Right now, we're in the post-production parts of a new course on Bitcoin and blockchain, where we do just that. We handhold you from the beginning to the end, explaining in layman's terms how the technology works and show you the exact tools we use to buy, hold, and sell our own Bitcoin. If you're interested in this course, we've set up a waiting list at alux.com slash Bitcoin. Make sure to add your email so you're notified when the course goes live. Number 11, peer-to-peer -peer lending. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is the old practice of giving someone your money and having them pay it back with interest, very similar to how banks and loan sharks do it, but completely legal. Even technology got involved, and now there are plenty of peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms online. We personally don't use any of them, but other acquaintances of ours do. Some of these platforms will show big promises of 12 to 15 to 20 percent yearly returns, and although you can hit those kinds of numbers, we've never personally looked at peer-to-peer -peer lending as a long-term strategy. It could work for those of you with a little capital and higher risk levels, but honestly, if you have a million dollars to put down, you'll most likely have better and safer alternatives. But for those interested to check them out, here are the best peer-to-peer -peer options according to Investorpedia. Who knows, maybe you'll find something you like. Number 12. Invest in art and collectibles. If you had a million dollars, there's no way we'd let you spend it all on Supreme gear or Jordans because the resale market is where it's at, bro. Although there is some truth to that, y'all are too young to know about the Beanie Babies, but here's an education piece for ya. In the early 90s, instead of rare Jordans and Yeezys, people were reselling plush toys called Beanie Babies. The most expensive ones sold for over $650,000, with many of them reselling between $10,000 and $50,000. It's safe to say it was a fad that went away. Would you pay $50,000 for a plush toy today? Of course you wouldn't. And something similar is happening today with Hyperbeast fashion. The actual alternative asset class to invest in is actual art. Art is the last loosely regulated market with prices constantly going up, at least when it comes to heritage pieces. Very few people know this, but blue chip art has outperformed the S&P 500 for the past 20 years. The problem here is, where do you even start? Unless you have someone who actually knows what the hell they're doing, you're better off buying bonds and leaving it at that. But even the art market has evolved in the past couple of years. Once again, not a sponsor, but there is this platform called masterworks.io that allows you to invest in art the same way you would a venture capital fund. The alternative is mutualart.com that shows when certain pieces come up for sale. Our recommendation would be to never throw more than 10% of your net worth into alternative assets, because even if you know what you're doing, there's still an element of real value versus perceived value, which doesn't apply when it comes to, let's say, buildings or land. So definitely be careful. Number 13. Buy a franchise business. 
a million dollars buys you at least one mainstream franchise business. The beauty of this franchise model is that most business problems are already solved. All you have to do is be a great manager, or even better, find one, and your business will keep printing you cash. Franchise businesses rely on a hefty investment, but they provide you with the equipment, the training, and the already established brand. At this point in time, if you're looking to start a coffee shop business and a Starbucks opens up next to you, you're basically done. So why wouldn't you be the one opening up the Starbucks? Let's break it down. You'll need to pay an initial fee of somewhere between $40,000 and $90,000 to purchase the Starbucks franchise. This covers the equipment and branding, and have a net worth of at least $250,000, with at least $125,000 of that liquid and ready to pour into the business in order to cover the initial running costs. The franchise fee for a McDonald's is $45,000, to which you add the property costs and the initial day-to-day -day capital. These are brands people love. Starbucks, McDonald's, KFC, Subway, Dunkin', Taco Bell. There are also cheaper options, but if you had a million dollars, we would first open up one spot in a good location and only then expand into more territories. A couple of weeks ago, we also did a video on franchises that are blowing up right now that almost nobody watched. Click in the top right corner for that one. Number 14. Land with land, the deal is pretty straightforward. You buy the land, you hold the land for some time, and then you sell the land for massive profits. We love land as an investment. Even the idea that you can literally own a piece of the earth that you can leave to your children to this day is mind-blowing to us. The basic formula for land acquisition is pretty simple. Buy land 30 to 50 kilometers outside of any major city and wait 20 years. The world population is growing, and for the foreseeable future, businesses will still concentrate their headquarters in large cities. People working in these corporations need their housing nearby, thus the land outside of the city is constantly developing. It won't be long until developers come knocking on your door interested in building. These developers will either straight up want to buy the land from you, or more often than not, work out a deal where they cover the building cost, you provide the land, and you split the profits. If you have a million dollars worth of land and 20 years go by, just the sale of a small portion could be more than enough to solidify your rich status. If you're interested in playing the game, you can develop the land yourself, build an apartment building or houses. Right now, we're seeing a lot of potential with agricultural land that is not far from commercial hubs. You're getting it 10 to 20 times cheaper, and if the expansion of the city goes your way, it won't be long until you have utilities and roads nearby. Number 15. Emerging Markets When we say emerging markets, we're talking about two things. One, developing countries, and two, emerging trends. For example, we already know that India has a large population, and right now, telecom is booming as a business. This means in the next decade, almost one billion new people will be joining the online marketplace. These people will need to buy, sell, trade, use services, and more. The same thing is happening to South America and Africa. Every successful business in what is traditionally called the West will be adapted and localized. In the US, you have Zillow as the main real estate portal and Amazon as the main e-commerce store. Who's going to dominate these markets locally? Grassroots companies have the unfair advantage of understanding the customer better than these giants who aren't as agile in development. So there is an opportunity to take your million dollars back to your home country and turn it into a fortune. The other aspect has to do with emerging trends and where the world is heading toward. Tesla became the most valuable car company because Elon went all in on the electric car when nobody believed in the project and most people never considered they would ever buy an electric car. The transition from petrol to electric is a trend. Everything that was traditionally powered by petrol will soon rely on renewable energy. Another big trend is ridding the world of plastic. We hate the paper straws as much as the next guy, but it won't be long until someone figures out a unique combination that's maybe better than plastic without the turtles snorting them. Another trend we're seeing has to do with consuming local foods. If you go to any supermarket right now, the tomatoes are from Mexico or Italy, the garlic is from Turkey or Egypt, and so on. Why is it cheaper to pack and collect the garlic in Egypt, put it on trucks, take it to the port, put it on a ship, carry it to here, house it there, and distribute it to all the supermarkets for you to buy? Somehow, all of this middleman cost will be cut out at some point, and whoever figures it out will win the challenge. 
If you have a million dollars to invest, we've outlined your best options. Personally, we would do a combination of two or three of these, but that's us. At this point, it's just a matter of what you believe would make the most sense for you, which raises the question, if you had $1 million, how would you invest it? Join the thousands of Aluxers who are currently debating this in the comments section below. And as a thank you for sticking with us until the end, of course you're getting a well-deserved bonus piece of info. $1 million doesn't mean you're rich. Today, $1 million makes you upper middle class at best. Sorry to break it to you. When we were growing up, $1 million was the goal to shoot for because in our minds that would have been enough to never have to worry about money again. Times have changed though. Governments have been printing money like crazy. Things are getting more and more expensive and that goal has been moved accordingly. YouTubers like Mr. Beast are giving away $1 million for your entertainment. The million is no longer as rare a unicorn as it used to be. We're not there yet, but before you die, billionaire will become the new millionaire. All it takes is for Jeff Bezos to crack that $1 trillion net worth, and suddenly the switch will happen. By the way, he's on track to get there by 2027, which is crazy in itself. As of 2020, in order to feel rich enough to not have to worry about money, you would need to be worth between eight to $15 million. This would be enough to qualify you as an HNWI, high net worth individual. It took us just under 10 years to go from zero to the first million, and by the time we got to it, the world had already changed. If you're starting today, we don't recommend shooting for $1 million because then you're aiming too low. Instead, try to find business opportunities that have the potential to go beyond $20 million if they work out. That way, by the time you hit it, with inflation adjusted, you'd be just right. If you're going to work anyway, you might as well win big. Keep these goals for yourself. You're different than everyone else. If you told your loved ones that $1 million isn't enough money and you'd actually need $20 million to be rich, they will genuinely laugh at you and think you're insane. This is why you need to set big goals and keep them to yourself. Big goals scare people with little vision. If you're ready for a big goal, please write the word big as your answer to today's question. That way we know the message got to all the right people. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.